Right. So uh, we are going to start with this webinar, Boost Your Career with Salesforce, right? So to begin with, you know, uh, just to uh, start the webinar, I would just, you know, try to set the expectations for the webinar, what all we are going to talk uh, in this webinar. At the end of this webinar, you know, what all answers you will have. So that's uh, what we, you know, quickly uh, get into. We'll start our discussion with the agenda for the webinar today. Okay. So as uh, you know, you might already be aware of uh, this that you know this is primarily focused on people who are willing to make a career in Salesforce and they exactly do not have uh, you know answer to certain questions. Where should they start? How should they plan their career? Uh, you know what all they need to you know uh, be successful in Salesforce. So now you know there are a few questions. I'm pretty sure that uh, you know some of you would be having a lot of questions that you want to ask. Uh, so but, but you know the time would not permit us to you know have individual or one on one interactions so what i have primarily done is uh, you know based on the interactions that i have had with uh, many people uh, who you know come and inquire about the training programs for you know on my website or people who generally you know come up with certain questions people who are trying to make a career into uh, salesforce so the most common questions i have tried to pick up and i have tried to uh, So uh, what I was talking about is, uh, though we'll not have that much of time to you know interact with each one of you individually or you know answer your questions, but these are you know, the questions which most of you guys have, or most of the people who are actually looking for a career in Salesforce. And uh, what I have tried to do is put all these things together and put it in one webinar, so that it can be uh, helpful to you guys. Right. So you know, setting the expectations here. What all we are going to talk about? First thing, uh, first. What is Salesforce? So that's the most common question, you know. A lot of us, you know, basically, you know, start hearing a, you know, a lot of buzz about Salesforce, and then we decide that okay, fine, let's go ahead and make a career in Salesforce. But sometimes we don't even know what exactly Salesforce is. So just because we have heard that okay, Salesforce is doing it in the market, um, we start thinking that okay, fine, let's let me go and you know uh, try making a career into Salesforce. But what I believe is that you should have an idea of what exactly you're going to learn, what exactly you do in that particular technology, what is that technology all about, right? So that's something very, very important. So we are actually going to you know, talk about what is Salesforce. Uh, we'll be talking about what is CRM, okay? Um, we'll be talking about why consider career in CRM. So why you should, or should you, you know, consider building a career in CRM? Why consider a career in Salesforce? Why you should you know consider uh, building a career in Salesforce? So we are actually gonna you know talk about these topics, and then we are actually gonna jump into the different modules in Salesforce. The most important part that you need to know, right? So once we are you know done with talking about what is CRM and what is Salesforce, why you should you know consider making a career in CRM. The different modules that we have in Salesforce, right? So you know, uh, that's another challenge that I see a lot of people have. They know that they want to make career in Salesforce, but they do not know which module. You know, most of the people who are actually you know, trying to build a career into this technology. Um, I'm not very sure if you saw, some of you guys have already you know uh, inquired with some other training institutes or you have inquired with some other trainers. Uh, you know, generally you know based on uh, the surveys that I have done, 
I realized that most of the training institutes or the trainers would just talk about one or two modules, the simple ones, the basic ones, right? Like you know, admin and developer. Well, yeah. So there are a couple of modules that most of the training institutes or the trainers would talk about. The thing is that there are several other modules which are uh, there and which are required for you to become successful with this technology. So there are two things that we have to understand. One is that I just get a break in a technology, I just get into a technology, I get a job into that technology. Second is I become successful in that, I actually see the growth in that technology. So it's not just about getting the job, it's also about growing in that technology. And you cannot just do a basic or a simple uh, module and uh, you know initiate your uh, this thing. You cannot just uh, you know have the basic uh, knowledge of the technology and you uh, cannot expect growth with that. Alright, so we are going to talk about different modules here, and uh, I'm also going to you know suggest you which module should be combined with which other module or how you should plan on that. Uh, yeah, so which modules to learn? That's uh, what I'm going to talk about. And then we are also going to talk about the learning part. Now this is the most important thing that I'm going to talk in today's session. This is the most important thing and this is uh, something which most of us are not even aware of. So you know, when I'm actually getting into technology, so what I need to do is I basically need to plan my learning path, right? So if we do have a you know proper learning path, then things will be simple. Uh, things are going to be easy for us. If you do not have a learning path, then you know we will keep on doing things on an ad hoc basis, which is not going to you know give you good results. So that's something which we have to understand. So you know we have to have a you know proper you know uh, uh, strategy for you know how we are actually going to you know plan our learning. Uh, it's not that you know you should learn everything uh, in a single day, but you need to plan and you need to upgrade on a regular basis. Otherwise, what happens is uh, you know you you do not grow that much in that particular technology. So you know, uh, for you just take take uh, the example of any technology. You will see there are certain people who are very successful on that technology. You will see uh, there are people who are not that successful. You know, even after working for years on a technology, there are people who just are working uh, you know at a very junior level. Right, so they don't get that kind of a growth, and you know they don't get that kind of a scope. The reason is this: that we, are, we do not have, you know, or we do not plan the right learning path. Most of us, right? So that's something which we are going to talk about in this uh, webinar. So uh, these are the things which we'll be, you know, starting with. So you know, uh, first things first: uh, what is Salesforce? It's short, and the simple answer to this is this is world's number one CRM. So you know, Salesforce is the number one CRM in the world. Today, it's the most popular CRM in the world. All right, that directly takes us uh, takes us to the next question. That is, what is CRM then? So, if Salesforce is the most popular CRM, then my next question would be, what exactly is CRM? So, uh, CRM is uh, the customer relationship management. Most of us must have heard about this customer relationship management. Now, what is this customer relationship management? Ideally, you know, to put it in simple words, uh, this is a tool which would help you manage good relationship with customer. I mean, that's the basic uh, or, the, or, or the simplest explanation of the CRM, right? However, now, you know, now when we look into CRM, CRM is a little more than that. It's not just a tool. It's not just managing the data of the customers in one place. It's a little more than that. So what is CRM? CRM is basically the set of tools, technologies, and procedures to manage, improve, or facilitate sales support and related interactions. Right? So this is not just a tool. So you know, CRM, when we are talking about CRM, we are not just talking about a software. So there's something very, very important that we need to understand here. So while we are, you know, most of us are focused on understanding the software or how does that software work, it's not just the software that we are talking about. We are basically talking about the procedures. We are talking about the techniques. We are talking about the technologies which are related to it, right? So the moment I say that I want to make a career in CRM, and if I, you know, just uh, focus on one particular technology, or you know, how does that software work, or you know, uh, how do uh, I use certain options on on that particular software? Uh, I'm not actually, you know, preparing for CRM that way because, you know, CRM is beyond that. Okay, so I'll have to understand other things related to CRM. You know, how things are flowing in CRM. What are the best practices in CRM? What are the techniques used? What are the, you know, 
uh, commonly used uh, procedures. So these are the things that we have to understand apart from understanding the tool. This is very, very important, uh, you know, factor. Okay. So CRM basically set of tools, technologies, procedures to manage, improve or facilitate. So it will help you manage your uh, sales support and related interactions. It will help you improve. It's not just about managing, right? So what are we talking about here is it's not just about managing your interactions. It's also about, you know, uh, having, you know, certain techniques in place to enhance the customer experience or to enhance the process that you, you know, used to uh, uh, interact with the customers. Okay, so improve those interactions to facilitate the interactions. All right. And it's not just about the sales part. You know, some of us might, you know, confuse it with the sales thing only. A CRM is something which is related to sales. It's not just sales. It's also related to support. It's related to analytics. It's related to marketing. So there are several other things which are associated with the CRM. Right, so your sales is associated directly connected to marketing. So obviously, sales and marketing are connected. Then your sales is connected to customer support. So yeah, that case, right? Some analytics is involved and all that stuff. Right. So uh, that's what we have uh, in the CRM. Right. Now, uh, talking about this in particular. Apart from this, you know, managing the sales and support uh, related interactions, it's not just about customers again. So it basically helps you manage interactions with customers and prospects. Prospects are, uh, you know, the ones who can be potential customers, who can be customers in future. So that's prospect, right? And not just the uh, customers and prospects, we are also talking about business partners, right? So my CRM should not just allow me to, you know, have interaction, though the name says customer relationship management, but it's not just, you know, tracking interactions with the customers anymore. It is about, you know, going beyond that, tracking interactions with my uh, prospects who are not yet customers, you know. Uh, it's also about, you know, tracking interactions with my business partners. Right. So let's say, you know, I'll, I'll just try to give you a very simple example. Let's say there is a there's a company which is selling laptops, all right, and then there is uh, another company which is actually providing the software or the you know operating system for those laptops. Every time I have to sell a laptop, let's say, every time I have to sell a laptop, I'll have to coordinate with the other company which is going to provide the software for the laptop. Now, if you do not track interactions with that partner on your CRM, you won't be able to track. You know, so you know when the laptop is being provided. Let's say there are four different vendors from where you actually take the uh, software for your laptop. Every time you're tracking details of the sale of the laptop, you have to track the details of which company is going to provide the software for that, right? Every time you are actually tracking details of a sale, you are taking an order, you also have to track details of which company is going to provide the software for that, okay? So that is the thing. So it's not just about the customers now. It's about, you know, your interactions with your partners, interactions with prospects and all. And this is for the throughout, uh, you know, this for throughout the enterprise, right? So that's what CRM is, all right? So if you look into uh, CRM, CRM is basically, a, you know, a combination of, I'll come to this slide a little later. So CRM is primarily a combination of uh, several things like, Sales, support, marketing, analytics. Okay, so these things actually combine to uh, make your CRM. Right. Okay. Now, so though we are, you know, because we are talking about CRM, let's understand the big force of CRM. Salesforce obviously is one CRM, but there are, you know, uh, there's this, you know, popular terminology, big force of CRM. So the four biggest players in the CRM market. Salesforce obviously. Uh, apart from Salesforce, there are three more, SAP, Oracle, Microsoft. Okay, so these are basically considered as the big force of CR. Right. Now, um, we'll be talking, you know, in some time I'm actually going to, you know, in the following slides, I'm actually going to talk about uh, why you should actually, you know, uh, choose Salesforce if you are actually looking for a career in CRM, why specifically Salesforce. That's something which I'm going to talk about and there I will, you know, talk about why uh, so you should give preference to Salesforce over other uh, CRMs, right? And all that we are discussing here is from the perspective of a job opportunity or the job scope, 
right so we are actually not going to you know get into that aspect of you know uh, from the business angle now we are basically going to talk about the job aspects all right okay so um, so these are the big force of the crm now the question the common question uh, that a lot of us will have in mind or if you have not thought of it you should think about it right now then should i consider career in crm if yes why what is the advantage of considering uh, you know a career in crm okay uh, crm in general you know let's understand uh, this in very simple words nowadays you know we see there is increasing competition there are a lot of things that need to be tracked so you know nowadays businesses are not just interested in tracking the uh, phone numbers and email ids 10 years back 15 years back if you were talking about you know any information about customer to be tracked a company would have actually thought of you know tracking maybe the phone number email id not more than that hardly we would track address 15 years back now we are interested in tracking as much detail as possible what is the uh, you know what is which product the customer is actually interested in right uh, i'm interested in tracking which product the customer is interested in what is the interaction that i had with the customer last time when is the customer planning to buy how many units the customer is planning to buy okay um, if the customer has already purchased from me i'm also interested in tracking whatever the customer has purchased by when that will expire so let's say you know some customer has come to me and you know purchased some 100 laptops i'm interested in tra uh, tracking that uh, you know after how many years uh the customer will need another 100 laptops because these laptops will have a lifetime uh, you know uh, will have a certain uh, life period right so it is going to expire maybe in 2 years 3 years right and then i would have the uh, you know scope or opportunity of providing 100 new laptops to the customer so you know all these details now businesses are not just you know uh, interested in tracking the phone number and email id they are definitely important but we are in, interested in tracking more details right so when there is more uh, requirement of you know tracking details and all obviously crm has got a lot of importance as compared to you know what it used to have earlier you know, companies are actually giving more uh, preference to the crm they are actually moving towards the crm small businesses not just the bigger companies earlier only big companies used to have crm now the smaller companies are also having crm they are customizing the crm as per their requirement which again requires more people for the crm right so there is a lot of growth happening in the crm industry the crm market right so when the crm market is growing that way it actually means that there will be more jobs there are more jobs being created in that particular market and there will be more jobs being uh, you know more jobs created in the future as well right so a few you know uh, quick facts uh, just to uh, support what i am trying to you know tell you here uh, rather than you know just talking about uh, uh, Yeah, just making certain statements. Let's just talk about a few, you know, numbers here, which will give us a little more idea about what is, you know, how things are actually uh, working. So the CRM market revenue, the revenue for the CRM market has been constantly growing, right? And this is what you can see. Okay, so all this, all these numbers are in uh, billion dollars. Okay, so from a uh, you know 8.1 billion dollar in 2007 2015 yet went up to 26.3 billion dollar so last 8 years this revenue for the crm market so this say crm market itself has grown more than 300 times uh, sorry 300% 3 times yeah so this is so you know this is the kind of growth that we have had in the last 8 or 9 years and, and you know We are in 2017 right now, so in 2017 it's you know close to 36.5 billion. So we are actually talking about four times, right? From where we started, so 10 years, four times growth, right? So this this is how this is the rate on which the CRM market overall has increased. So the CRM software market, you know, was at 26.3 billion in 2015. it was at 23.2 billion dollars uh, in 2014 right so it was at you know representing a 12.3% annual growth 
and if you see the forecasted for 2007 is 36.5 billion dollars right so if you see the numbers you you can understand you know how the CRM market is actually growing and uh, there's one thing that we have to understand now, this is a very very important thing to understand that nothing in this world can keep on growing continuously everything will have a time where it grows very fast and then you know there will be a time when it you know actually becomes saturated the market becomes saturated and then the growth kind of you know uh, is not that much but the good thing for us for people who are actually trying to make a career into CRM at this point of time is that this is the time when the CRM is growing right so this is a good time to get into this particular technology so for everything there is a right time and this is the, the best time because it's growing very fast in the market right don't expect the same kind of a growth 10 years from now in 2025 it's not going to be the same kind of a growth because it will become kind of you know pretty much saturated most of the companies will be already having it right so we don't expect that kind of a growth or that kind of you know increase in the you know, number of jobs being generated and all right so that is the thing so that's something which we have to understand okay now uh, we are talking about the growth and we talked about uh, you know uh, a few minutes back I just talked about uh, the big force of CRM right or Salesforce, SAP, Oracle and Microsoft. And the point is if CRM market is growing why shouldn't I get into any of those four uh, you know any of the other three why to you know choose Salesforce. If you do not have this question you should have this question at this point of time. That okay fine I'm you know I'm looking for a career in CRM but why specifically Salesforce? CRM market is growing so you know it should be good for uh, to go to go for, go ahead with any of those CRMs, right? Okay. So uh, to talk about that, I've got another stats here. Okay. And these are all Gartner reports, right? So n none of these have been created by me. These are, are all you know the reports which Gartner uh, you know creates, and these are some certain excerpts from there. All right. So if you look into this, uh, the CRM market share, how that has actually you know. Uh, grown or you know how market share for different companies have you know flown for uh, last 8 to 10 years so you would notice that in 2007 this is where Salesforce was so this line is Salesforce okay some 5-6 percent okay now the market share for Salesforce is 20 percent okay now if you look into this the other you know these are the big force this one is uh, Microsoft this one is uh, Oracle this is SAP and this is Salesforce hmm? you can see this and this line at the top is basically combination of all other CRMs all right so we are not uh, focusing on this part let's you know understand the competition in the big four from 2007 till 2015 none of the other big four CRMs have grown in terms of market share revenue must have grown obviously because the you know entire market uh, grew but if you look into the market share there's only one you know company which has actually been able to increase the market share and that's also you know close to 20 percent here if you look into this so almost four times market share has increased for Salesforce for others the market shares have dropped if you look into this uh, SAP was like close to 26 27 percent here has come down to below 10 percent here right Oracle which had close to you know 14 15 percent here has come down to uh, you know for close to four or five percent here Microsoft never you know got that kind of a market share still reeling there so that's how it is all right so though we are talking about the big force Salesforce is the only one which is actually growing very fast. So you know what is happening? How is it getting the market share? Because the companies are actually migrating from these CRMs to this CRM. You know, the companies are migrating from SAP CRM. So what is happening to the market share of SAP? Being captured by Salesforce. That's how it is, uh, you know, working. All right. So that's the reason why it's a good idea to build a career in Salesforce. So if you are talking about CRM, if you are looking into CRM, Salesforce is a good thing to start with. Right, so now we have you know a clear understanding about you know why Salesforce. So all that you know buzz that you guys have been you know uh, hearing about uh, in all these uh, while. Now you understand what exactly is happening in the market, 
and I, this is something which I want you to understand. So I do not want anyone to you know make a you know career decision just because my friend told me. You know, there are, these are you know pretty. Um, uh, yeah, I would rather you know call it funny interactions. Uh, you know, so some people uh, actually tell me that uh, one of my friend told me that Salesforce is good in market, so I want to learn Salesforce. Well, obviously, I can understand that you trust your friend, but you know, apart from you know having trust on your friend, you also need to understand how things are moving. So, what is Salesforce? If it's CRM, why not you know some other CRM? That sort of thing. All right. So that is the thing, and all these things we are the ones which we are talking about. Is from the you know uh, job perspective. We are not even getting into the functionalities perspective and all that side. You know, we are, I'm not getting into that part because that's something which is not that much irrelevant for us at this point of time. We are basically you know focusing on you know where, where more jobs are getting generated. That's what my you know working is. When I do similar kind of a presentation for a business, then I talk about you know why Salesforce uh, you know why you should choose uh, choose Salesforce, and then. Uh, there I talk about the functionalities which Salesforce has got, but that's not the most relevant thing here. For us, it's where the more jobs are being generated and you know how the market share is actually increasing for all these. Right? Okay. So uh, that is the thing. So the next thing that we will be knowing or even we would want to understand is the different modules in Salesforce. Uh, I want to make a career in Salesforce, but I do not know what all modules are there. I do not know where to start. Okay, that's that's a common question with most of the people. And if I know where to start, I do not know how to grow further. Okay. So this is a common thing. I have talked to you know if I have talked to you know let's say hundred people, I realize that out of hundred ninety eight or ninety nine of them, when they went to you know some other training provider and they talked to them about you know Salesforce, they were you know. Uh, Told about one or two modules. Let's say you know, start with an admin and then learn the developer, and that's it. And it's not because you know these modules are the only ones which are available. It's because they provide only these modules, right? So you never actually get to know what are the other modules, how you should be planning and all, right? And then maybe you know after doing the, these modules, some of us you know do uh, get a job. The problem is that even after getting a job in that. You are not able to grow as per you know as you should have, right? So we'll have to understand the different modules. So yeah, I'm gonna you know quickly talk about what are the different modules and how you should plan uh, your learning path to be successful with this particular technology because this is the time when it's growing, right? So this is the right time to get into this and it's the right time to grow with it. It's not just about okay get into the technology and you know just work as a very uh, basic kind of a support role for five years. Obviously, you know that's not the thing. If the market is growing, I should also be growing, right? Okay. So the most basic model, most of us might be aware of it, the admin model. This is the one that you have to start with. Anyone who is planning to learn Salesforce at any point of time needs to start with this, the admin module. Okay. But this admin module is basically the, and you know while I'm talking about these modules and all here. I'm primarily, you know, uh, talking within the scope of what I do in my training programs. Okay, so some other training pro, you know, institutes might not be talking about the basics of Salesforce and the admin modules. Are not actually, uh, it's difficult for me to, you know, understand what they cover and what they do not cover. But I'm basically when I'm talking about uh, things here, I'm uh, considering that we are in general talking about the training programs that I conduct, and I'm going to talk about the modules and. You know that is. But just to you know make sure that uh, we understand that this is the scope of our discussion. All right. So uh, the first thing that you should be starting with is the admin module. No matter what you want to do here, you should start with admin module. Why you, uh, I should start with admin module? I want to become a developer because admin module is the one where you we talk about the basics of Salesforce. We get introduced to the you know uh, platform. We get introduced to the different components. We get introduced to you know the structure. How things are built, so that's how we get introduced. You know, using the declarative approaches and all. So, admin module is something that you have to start. There's no uh, way that you don't do this module. Okay. So, so, some of you already would be having admin module. So, anyone who has already you know done admin module can get into the developer module or other modules I'll be talking about. But this is the basic thing. Everyone uh, you know needs to do this module. 
this gives you the basic uh, you know understanding about you know, how Salesforce works and all that stuff, right? So, what is the job of an administrator, or you know, what all things uh, is what all things are expected out of a Salesforce administrator, and what all expertise do you develop with this model? To learn how to manage users, to learn how to uh, control permissions. So, an administrator is expected to manage users, their permissions, who will have access to which all things. To uh, you know, control the permissions, they will need to understand what all different components are available within Salesforce, right? So, control permissions for different components at different levels. Data management is one important role of the administrators. They actually you know work with the data, they manage the data, data cleansing, you know, deduping the data, restricting uh, invalid data, or restrict uh, restricting the duplicate records. All these things. So, you know, a lot of activities related to the data management part. Again, when I say manage users, again, you know, that would include managing the users, their licenses, freeing up the licenses, freezing the users, uh, creating licenses for the other users, all that kind of stuff. Any process automation, so, you know, that's also something which a system administrator would be involved in, you know, automating the processes and all wherever possible so so that you know some of the manual hours can be reduced. O OTB customizations. OTB customizations are the out of the box customizations which do not require you to you know write programs and all. So that sort of you know basic customizations and uh, automations are basically the role of system administrators. O OTB is out of the box. Right. So these are uh, apart from this your system administrator would also be uh, you know, involved in creating reports and dashboards. So these are the primary jobs, you know, uh, at a high level overview, you know, these are basically the primarily jobs, uh, job roles and responsibilities of an administrator and this, these are the things that you learn in the admin module. All right. The next module is the developer module. So what all do you do in the uh, developer module? So a developer is someone who is actually expected to be an expert in Apex and Visual Code. These are the two programming languages that Salesforce uses. The developer is a person who can actually write programs to control the things, right? So whatever application Salesforce has provided, Salesforce gives you the option to customize the application. It gives you the option to build your application, uh, you know, to do you know customizations and all. Sometimes we need to control things using programs. So, so there are two common program, uh, two most important programs that we use here, Apex and Visual Force. Apart from this, there are certain other things which can be used, like HTML, CSS, JavaScript. These can also be used. But Apex and Visual Force are the native languages here on Salesforce. So a developer is expected to be an expert in Apex and Visual Force. Should have you know, good knowledge in Apex and Visual Force. So you know, basically as a you know, in a developer module, you learn how to write FX program, how to write Visual Force program, you learn how to customize things. You learn how to build your custom UIs, user interfaces. How do you build your own user interface for your uh, users? You learn how to develop custom functionalities. Okay, so you learn how to uh, develop certain custom functionalities for your app. Right, right. With the with the help of program, you can develop those. When you learn how to write custom logics, so in case you want to write your own logics, you know what should happen when a user creates a record, what will happen when a user opens a page, that sort of things. That's a, again you know something which can be controlled using the pro these programs. The users, uh, developers should also be able to create public sites. So sometimes uh, we you know would like to have our data available to the public, right? Uh, so developers are the ones who should be able to. Uh, make these things available on the sites. So data, which they want to you know display to the people, that should be a you know, developer's role to create sites for those users or for visitors of the website. And uh, some data can be made available there itself. All right. Okay. So apart from this admin developer module, there is another module which is the sales cloud. Pretty sure some of you must have heard about the terminology. Not sure if you are aware of what exactly this is. Right. So this is a very common question: What is Sales Cloud? Okay. So Sales Cloud is basically the sales module of Salesforce. Right. So now, let me tell you one thing. You know, before we actually talk about Sales Cloud, let me just you know uh, give a bit of perspective on this. 
Salesforce is the world's number one CRM. Right? Now it is world's number one CRM because it has got a lot of functionalities, inbuilt functionalities. It's not just that you can build functionalities or if you, you can write program, that does not make it world's number one CRM. Right? What program you are gonna write, that does not make Salesforce the most popular. Thing. Salesforce is most popular because its application itself has got a lot of functionalities inbuilt. Right? A sales cloud consultant, also referred to as an implementation expert, is a is the person who understands the sales module of Salesforce properly. Okay, it's itself is a big thing, the sales module of the Salesforce. Alright. So there's a person who understands what the functionalities are available within Salesforce and how can we utilize the you know uh, standard functionality to uh, set up our sales process. So a sales cloud consultant is uh, you know ideally a person who understands the Salesforce application pretty well. And when I'm talking about Salesforce application, I'm talking about the standard functionalities which are available, and has a good idea about the sales process. Understands how the sales process works, right? And should be able to implement the sales process properly on the Salesforce CRM, right? So that's basically what the role of a Salesforce, uh, sorry, Sales Cloud consultant is. So a Sales Cloud consultant is an expert in implementing process to manage leads, manage accounts and contacts, opportunities, campaigns, uh, products, pricing, sales targets, forecast. So all these things. Now, these things uh, might, you know, while I'm just using the words, these seem to be very simple, all right? But there is a lot of mechanism inside each one of these, right? So for people who are a little familiar to Salesforce or any other CRM would just, you know, think, what is there in managing leads? It's not that. So it's not supposed, uh, not just about you know tracking the details of the leads. So we are not just talking about you know creating a database, you know fill in a form, fill in the lead details, and that's it. No. We are talking about managing leads, which means you know from where the lead is going to come, how the lead is going to be assigned to the you know uh, sales reps, you know how the lead will get converted, the entire process, what happens with the lead, stuff like that. All right. So small, small things. There are several things. So you know, if you just look into your CRM, it's just about a lead. But there are you know hundred questions that you can have related to leads. How the lead will get into the system? What will happen when the lead gets created? How is it going to be assigned to the users? What sort of mailer you want to send to the lead? How are you actually going to define different mailers for different products? How do you understand which lead is you know has come for which product? There are hundreds of things like this. So and each one of these is actually a very uh, you know. It's something that you know a, a, an implementation expert has to you know come in and give his in, inputs to manage these things properly, right? We talk about product and then we talk about pricing, right? Product and pricing management itself is you know something which requires you to you know put a good uh, amount of effort to streamline things. There can be companies which are having you know multiple pricing schemes. You can have different pricing schemes for uh, you know different territories. Or different geographic locations, you can have different price schemes, uh, pricing schemes for different industries. You can have different pricings for different seasons. How do you manage all these pricing? How do you make sure that you know uh, if there is a one-day sale, the pricing automatically you know uh, or you know how do you make sure that the pricing gets updated for that particular day, and on the next day it again becomes a normal pricing? How do we ensure that? Sort of thing? So it's not just about you know uh, having one product and one price. For one product, I can have 50 different pricing schemes for different industries, for different countries, for different uh, you know, kind of customers, right? So that is the thing. So pricing is you know something where you know there is a lot of effort which needs to go into this to set up the implement uh, set up the process for the this pricing management, campaign management, managing campaigns again is you know big thing. Working with the sales team and the sales targets, how do you assign the sales targets and how do you calculate whether your team is actually achieving the targets? Right. So there are too many things which are involved in that, and sales cloud consultant is basically expected to be an expert who can actually define this process. Right. Okay. Now, so uh, and as I told you, you know, while I'm talking about this sales cloud, 
I'm talking about these functionalities which are available within Salesforce. So for doing all these things, Salesforce already has got functionalities available. You don't have to you know, write programs to develop all these things. But it, a developer, you know, a developer ideally would not know all these inbuilt functionalities. Sales cloud consultant is expected to know all these functionalities, right? So when a company is hiring someone, they would prefer someone with a sales cloud experience because they know that the sales cloud consultant can actually save me a lot of money and can save me a lot of development activities or efforts because he knows the inbuilt functionalities. And these are basically, uh, you know, the functionalities which are available within Salesforce are basically the best practices, right? Anything which Salesforce has actually included in their uh, app, the world's number one CRM has included in its app, that's basically the best way to do things. If you try to develop that sort of functionality, you might not develop the right kind of thing because you don't have that much of a knowledge or experience as compared to what Salesforce has. So if you try to develop those functionalities, what will happen if you do not have a good sales cloud consultant? Just think about it. If you are a company, you have Salesforce, and you don't have a good Salesforce consultant, what is going to happen? You will end up developing things which are already available. You will put your time, you will put your effort, and you won't get the end result as good as what Salesforce has already given. Right? So that is the thing. Now the service cloud, service cloud uh, is again, you know, they, uh, the module which primarily focuses on the service module of uh, the service side of the Salesforce CRM, right? So a service cloud consultant is basically an expert in implementing process to manage cases, assigning the cases, defining case processes. Now again, see, your customer support process is again a big thing, right? How the cases are going to be, you know, raised. What are the different channels for them? You know, what is the process of uh, resolving a case? There can be different processes for different types of cases. What happens? What are the steps involved in that? How the cases will be assigned? How do you ensure that the cases are being, you know, resolved in time? If they're not being resolved, is there an escalation which is happening? How that escalation thing happens? All right. How do you inform the customer that the case has been resolved? What happens if the customer is not satisfied with the case? Right. How do I reduce that at? What are the you know different ways of reducing the turnaround time of my customer support team? So there are several things which again get into the customer support process. Service Cloud Consultant is an expert to understand these things. And again, we are talking about the inbuilt functionalities. Right. Then the other module is the integration module. This is you know pretty much related to the developer module. So it's the next step after the developer module. So what happens? What is this integration module? In this, you know, we basically talk about how do you build an interaction with an external app. Developing in Salesforce is one part. Integration is a module where we basically discuss about, uh, you know, how your Salesforce app is going to interact with other apps. Right? Right? Let's say your Salesforce uh, CRM needs to interact with Facebook, or it needs to interact with LinkedIn. How will that happen? How do you build those interactions? How do you expose the Salesforce APIs? So if there is a developer for other application, you know, uh, an in integration expert should be able to suggest how, you know, or should be able to expose the Salesforce APIs to that other developer so that you can interact with Salesforce. Integration module also talks about creating your custom APIs. So apart from using the APIs which Salesforce has provided, you Salesforce also gives you the option of building your own custom APIs. So how do you build those APIs? How do you build the web services? the code which can be actually uh, invoked from an external application that's called a web service. So web service is, uh, you know, is basically a program or a code which can be invoked from an external system over the web which can be executed over the web. That's the reason why it's called web service. So building those web services is something which, you know, this module lets you do. It allows you to define callouts. Callout is basically uh, making a call to an external web service. So if there is another application and there's a web service on that application, making a call out will basically invoke that particular website, which is a uh, web service, which is not in Salesforce, which is outside Salesforce, right? Working with APIs of other apps. The integration expert is also expected to work with APIs of the other apps. Like Salesforce has got its own APIs. Other apps also have got APIs, like Facebook has got its own APIs and all. So this integration expert is expected to work to do the APIs as well. Right. Now. Then comes the lightning module. This is the most uh, 
what do you say? A recent thing, all right? The new thing, and uh, it has got uh, a lot of uh, buzz. So you must be hearing a lot about lightning nowadays. There's a lot of talk about lightning. What is lightning? Right. So what is lightning? Uh, just going to give you a quick idea about this. The lightning, lightning is basically the new UI of Salesforce. Salesforce has been using the same UI for quite some time. Let us come up with a new UI. Okay. So it's called Lightning Experience. It's the successor of Salesforce Classic. So the current UI or the old UI of Salesforce is called Salesforce Classic. The new UI is called Lightning. So they are actually trying to migrate from the old UI to the new UI. That's the simple understanding of this. Right? Because they are actually moving into the new UI, a lot of things are changing. The framework which, are, which was being used for developing the old UI, that is changing. Right? So when I talk about development and I talk about you know the framework for developing the UIs in the Salesforce Classic, the framework used in Lightning is different, right? So this Lightning uses Aura framework and SLDS. SLDS stands for Salesforce Lightning Design System, right? So it actually uses the Aura framework and the Salesforce Lightning Design System to build the UIs, all right? Now, this Lightning training basically lets you uh, the Lightning module basically lets you understand more about Aura framework, how the SLDS work, and how do you develop the UIs, custom UIs for the new Salesforce uh, experience, right? You learn how to build the components for Lightning experience, you learn how to build custom UIs for Lightning experience, you uh, learn how to develop device independent user interfaces. So one main you know one purpose for salesforce moving into the new user interface or the user experiences that nowadays a lot of people have started using mobile so when salesforce was launched you know some 10 years back uh, at that time people did not have that many mobiles and you know the sales uh, teams used to access salesforce mostly on the desktop computer, desktop or, lap or laptops right nowadays most of the people are actually trying to access it through uh, Several devices, different devices. People are using tabs, and people are using mobile devices, and all. Right. So we need UIs which are device independent. Uh, that's one very, very important reason for coming up with this new user interface. Right. So this Lightning is basically uh, something which would allow you to develop device independent UIs. All right. So what happens here is uh, for this Lightning thing. What happens with the Lightning is. Uh, Salesforce is, you know, gradually moving into the Lightning experience, right? So two, three years down the line, we will see that you know all the UIs that we see in Salesforce are going to be Lightning enabled or you know, uh, Lightning compatible, that sort of thing. All right. So that's one area, uh, or that's one reason why we should be considering you know learning the Lightning module of Salesforce. It's time to you know begin with it. Though Salesforce has completely not moved into Lightning, but it is actually you know eventually moving into, it, right? So sometime down the line, we will see that everything is being moved into Lightning. All right. So for people who actually, you know, uh, get into the Lightning module right now, they will have the advantage. You know, once the company that you're working with that is, uh, you know, migrating to Lightning or they're trying to build all the UIs on the Lightning, they'll be able to use these things. All right. Yeah. So this also, you know, lets you uh, understand how you do you migrate your classic UIs to Lightning. So that's a very important thing, which eventually has to happen. Okay. You know, some point of time, right? So because this entire classic view has to go, and the lightning view has to come, right? So that is the thing. Okay. So these are the different modules. Uh, now, what is the right learning path for you? So to understand the right learning path for yourself, there's a simple question that you have to, you know, uh, answer. The question is, what kind of a role you would like to be in? This is a simple question. All right. Don't go by the modules. Try to, you know, your first question should be what kind of a role I want to be into. There are two primary kind of roles, functional and technical consultant. So do you want to get into functional side or do you want to get into the technical side? That's the question. That's a big question. Yeah. All right. Apart from functional technical, there is one more. Okay. Uh, one, more uh, one more bonus option that you have is a techno functional. All right. So functional consultant, technical consultant, and techno functional consultant. Three options we have. So let's understand, you know, uh, what should be the learning path for functional consultant. Functional consultant is ideally the person 
who's more into the functional understanding, business understanding, business analyst kind of a role, and is, you know, you do not want to get into uh, any technical stuff. You don't want to get into any coding, any programming, anything. Technical consultant is you want to become a you know, programmer, you understand, you are comfortable with programming, you want to become a code programmer kind of a thing. You know, get into much of programming or you know coding. Techno functional is something, you know, a combination of this. Uh, this one has got the most demand at this point of time. The companies expect people who understand the technical side of it as well as the functional side of it. Right? Okay. So let's understand the learning path for it. So if you want to become a functional consultant, you should ideally be focusing on or your learning path should be start with admin, go to sales cloud, and then go to service cloud. Right. So if you really want to become just a functional consultant. So you, I told you, you know, we have to start with admin. Uh, from admin, we can go to sales cloud and service cloud. You can do it other way around also. Admin, service cloud, and sales cloud. Good thing. I mean, depends on your requirement. However, you should do see, service cloud after admin only if you have got some, uh, you know, prior experience of the service or the customer support industry. Right? Then it makes more sense to go directly to service cloud after the admin. Right? So this will give you the admin basic knowledge. It will, you know, make you an expert in the sales cloud implementation. It will make you an expert in the service cloud implementation. So, if you want to purely become a functional consultant, this should be your learning path. If you want to become a technical consultant, your learning path should be admin dev. Start with admin dev, and then do integration and lightning. You can do it either way: admin dev, then lightning, and then integration, or firstly integration and then lightning. But these two modules, eventually, if you want to become a developer, you cannot become a good developer if you are not doing integration and like many modules. It's very, very important for you to do these modules, right? So just being able to write a text and visual force program will make you a developer, but to see growth in it, to you know, grow as a developer, there are these modules which you have to be uh, good again. All right. The best thing, techno function, okay? If you are planning to become a techno functional consultant, then you should again start with admin dev. Okay. You know, admin dev should be fine for you. You don't need to get into details or in depth knowledge of uh, integration and lightning. On top of that, you can do a sales cloud service cloud. Okay. All right. So that actually makes you an expert in basics, you know, user management, administration. That makes you an expert in the development within Salesforce. That also gives you knowledge about the sales cloud and the service cloud and build functionality. So any company would prefer to you know hire you because you have got the inbuilt knowledge of inbuilt functionalities and you have got the knowledge of uh, you know, how the customization would work. You have also got the knowledge of how the development would work, how to write programs and all that stuff, right? So this is the best combination. Okay. And for people who do not know where to start with, admin dev program is the best thing to start with. The best to start with is your admin dev program. All right. Uh, if you are slightly towards, you know, uh, getting into the technical part, if you want to become kind of a techno functional, if you just want to stay away from the coding and all that stuff, just do admin, then to enhance things, do sales cloud, service cloud. Now, um, very important part. Since I have talked about these learning paths, I never mean that you should learn all these things at once. Okay, so if you try to learn all these things at once, that will not be a very good idea. That will not be a good thing to do. Okay, the, I've seen people who would say that, okay, fine, let me do four programs and then I'll start searching job. That's not the right idea. All right? You should, you know, go module by module. Start with a certain module, try to get into the job, then, you know, enhance or upgrade your skill sets. Right? So let's say you just want to become a functional consultant, try to, you know, start with admin. Get into you know try to get an admin job. Then you know maybe 15 days, 20 days, one month. Then get into the sales cloud module or the service cloud module, right? So you should always try to go through these module by module. All right, it's actually gonna help you. Don't try to you know rush through things. Admin dev module you should do you know uh, as a combined thing, but other modules you should take some time and then you should do, so that you have enough time to you know. Uh, Absorb what you have learned in the previous module, right? Before jumping into the other one, 
that's that's very very important all right okay so that is the thing now uh, one you know question or you know one thing that i get to know from a lot of people and uh, i came up with a, you know uh, with a win win situation on that a lot of you know uh, trainees and a lot of uh, you know people who actually wanted to do the training program they came up to me and when i suggested them that you should have a learning path some of them actually showed interest in you know doing multiple training programs but you know uh, the kind of investment or kind of you know, money that you have to invest, you know uh, put in terms of learning all different modules is sometimes a challenge for some of us not saying that it's a challenge for everyone but for some of us that would or that might be a challenge right so you know there will be a course fee associated with each module and then you will have to spend certain amount on that and then what happens is uh, sometimes you know that actually you know uh, keeps you back from actually getting into uh, the other module you think that okay let me just do one module right so the biggest uh, uh, what he says be motivated in terms of you know something which actually does not allow us to enhance our knowledge or skill set is that you know sometimes we feel that okay there is an additional amount of fee that we have to pay right so this is something which was actually brought into my knowledge and uh, you know what i did i tried to do is i actually you know talk to uh, some of the people and i came up with uh, a win win situation here so uh, which is a referral program so what is a referral program referral program is where you can actually refer a few friends and then you can uh, you know kind of uh, get some bonus points on each referral okay so there's a complete uh, mechanism de uh, designed for this i'm actually going to share you the url also uh, after this slide so you can use that referral program every time you refer a friend you get some certain referral points the moment your friend enrolls for a program you get certain referral points and there is a certain number of referral points that you need for each program all right so once you have accumulated those points you are eligible to enroll for that particular training program all right because most of us will have friends who are actually and we keep on referring and that's something which happens uh, most of my training programs have referrals right uh, so people there are you know people who refer to their friends and all right so i thought of this win win situation when you are referring when you have got friends you can refer those friends to the training programs once they enroll you get the referral so the bonus points and you can accumulate those points and you can enroll for the training program right so that's one way actually that's a solution uh, to that uh, challenge so that actually lets us uh, overcome that big challenge of that of okay, if i'm going to do four or five programs you know what happens and all that stuff right okay now uh, to uh, end the webinar you know and you know leave you with a few quick recommendations here i'm going to show you that referral link uh, you know, after we complete this all right so few quick recommendations from my side we talking about this your learning should be a process it should not be just a step okay so you know try and understand this if you're trying to build uh, you know a career into a you know particular uh, technology or in a certain domain you have to understand that your learning should not stop and for you know some for something like uh, you know a crm industry or the salesforce industry which is you know growing pretty fast at this point of time this is where you know if it's a saturated market then you know still you can think of you know um, having a little slow learning but here it has to be fast it has to be constant right so you cannot uh, you know just uh, think of uh, doing one module and stop there or you know just take one year to complete one module that's not correct because every day is you know we are actually moving towards the saturation right so that is the thing so get into that uh, habit of learning process keep on upgrading yourself on a constant basis so constantly upgrade yourself your skill sets very very important choose the right career path so i have already suggested things on this so choose the right career path for yourself begin with the right program right so you know decide on the career path and begin with the right program for yourself and use referral programs in case you know you want to so start with the right program first and then you know to enhance your skill sets and all you can use the referral program to uh, you know do things further if you're not very sure which program to start with quick recommendation here is start with admin dev program okay that's definitely going to fetch you some good role initially because other programs you cannot even start with right so if you're not very sure if you want me to suggest i would suggest admin dev program to start with but 
uh, it, that should not be the end. That should just be the beginning, you know, for you to get end to a job, right? All right. So that's what we are basically going to discuss here. Uh, thank you all. You can visit me on uh, my website www.gtrain.com. Pretty sure uh, most of you are aware of this. I'll quickly show you this, uh, or I'll quickly put this link for the referral program on this. Uh, on the chat window. Okay, so this is the link, uh, gcing.com slash refer. This is the link here, you know, you have got all the details, how does it work and everything. So there is a certain number of points which is associated with each program. Every time you are referring a friend, you get a hundred referral point for each referral who enrolls with us for any training program. So you refer a friend who enrolls for any of the modules, you get hundred uh, you know points, and then these are the number of points that you need to uh, have to enroll for any of these programs. All right. To manage all these things, all that you have to do is you just have to create an account here, start referring to your friends from there. You'll have the option to refer your friends here. All right. You already have an account, you can log in from here. All right. And then you can actually get those points, and then using those points, you can enroll for an auto code. The most simple thing that we can do. Right. A good thing is uh, sometimes it would happen that uh, I might not, I'm like, I need to do admin plus dev training. Okay. So ideally, I should be able to refer five friends to get into this program. Right. I've got three friends. I've referred three friends. I'm not getting two more friends, but I'm. I really want to do the training as soon as possible. So what I've done is just to make things, you know, a little more simpler, okay, and easy for you. So you can redeem your available referral points in prorated basis, right? So it's going to be something like this. So in case you have three friends, you've got 300 referral points. So 60% of your course fee gets deducted through referral points. You can just make the balance 40% of the course fee for you know that particular program. Makes life even more easy. It's not that okay, only when I have five, then only I can use that. You can use it after you know if you have got two friends, you know, just refer two friends and then get that you know particular uh, advantage, right? The referral bonus advantage. Right. So that is the thing. I'm just gonna put this link in the chat window. Um All right, so that's it uh, for today. So I one quick moment, sorry. Yeah, so what I hear from uh, people around me, I keep on doing certain webinars on you know, different different uh, aspects of Salesforce also from time to time. So uh, your email IDs will be included in our mailing list. So anytime we are doing a webinar which is kind of you know important or relevant to you guys, you will get an invitation whenever you want. You can enroll for those uh, webinars. Uh, on my website also, you can actually see the webinar section. Keep a track of that. Any webinars uh, which you are relevant to you, you can use those webinars or you can enroll for those. Keep a track of my Facebook page. You know, I keep on posting some you know knowledge related article every now and then on that. So if you are uh, you know uh, for uh, if you're following that uh, page continuously, you keep on uh, hearing from me you know frequently about any of these webinars and all. And anytime you receive an email for a webinar or any related stuff, and you do not want to receive that in future, you always have an option of unsubscribe. You can just unsubscribe that. Right? All right then. Uh, thank you all.